to present my university and my laboratory. So Nantes Université, it's a higher education and research institution that integrates uh, several faculties, uh, three grandes écoles, in France we have uh, what is called grandes écoles for grand, uh, big universities, and uh, a university hospital, like here, um, a technological research institute and a national research institute. We, are, uh, we have 42,000 students. Uh, we are three, more than 3,000 teaching and research staff. And we have more than uh, 1,000 PhD students. And we are organized in uh, 42 research units. From those research units, so there is the Laboratory of Digital Sciences of NOT, Elis Chuen. Um, we are 500 people there. We are the largest public research laboratory in the region. The region is named uh, Pays de la Loire. And 50% um, of those people are researchers and faculty members. Um, we are uh, from 18 nationalities. We are only 22% women. Um, mo more than a third are PhD students. And they, are, uh, they have 36 nationalities and they do better than uh, permanent position persons. They, have, uh, they are 27% women. Our research uh, is organized in polls and each poll integrates more or less five teams. So we have uh, a poll for system design and operation, software and distributed systems uh, science, uh, signals, images, ergonomics, and languages, and data science and decision making. So this is the poll that I uh, coordinate. And we have robotics, process, and calculations. Maybe it's because of these thematics that uh, we are not so a lot of uh, women in the, in the laboratory. So what's a license? I think everybody knows what is a license. Um, this is a very simplified definition of license. So uh, the license indicate precisely the conditions of use of the data. So in particular, what actions are authorized, obliga obligatory, or prohibited. So I think everybody has uh, already tried to read a license and it can be difficult to read a license. So um, those notes are very important. So we have to read them. We have but we have not always the time to do it. And um, uh, there are a lot of uh, organizations, so countries or uh, enterprises that define uh, different kind of license for different kind of resources. In France, there is this license that is named uh, open license uh, that is made for uh, creative works and also for data sets. There is also uh, in UK, so the open government license that was actually defined for the same uh, purposes. And both licenses are uh, compliant, compatible with CC BY. So the most known group of licenses are the Creative Commons license. There are licenses also for software. So in France, they define the CECIL license is uh, to be compliant with the GPL license that is very uh, well known. And um, well, all those licenses motivate, foster, to use resources that are licensed. Um, and that's why we can actually, in several search engines, filter resources by license. So I don't know if you have already tried it, but here with a Google search for datasets, you can filter with user's rights. So here in the middle, you have the user's rights. But the problem is that they are very limited in the license that they support. So that's that one problem. Another problem is that you don't know which resources you can combine together to obtain a new uh, mashup of uh, those resources. And uh, you don't know also how, uh, which will be the license that is appropriate to protect your, your new resource. Okay, so that's these two questions motivated our work. That is um, how to automate and simplify the license compatibility. So first, we need to have license in a machine readable format. So there are already uh, languages that allow us to do that. So a license is uh, defined to be a machine readable license as a set of actions 
assign it to status. So here we have the status, like the permissions, the obligations, or the prohibitions. And those status have associated the actions that, uh, uh, that are needed for a particular license. There are already languages that allow to uh, describe license. Uh, there is uh, Creative Commons that has 12 actions that are used in their licenses. There is also this language that is ODRL that proposes 72 actions. So in these actions, there are already the uh, actions of Creative Commons. So we have the, the means to uh, have machine readable license. So here we have an example where we will uh, verify how with machine readable license we can define a kind of restrictivity um, relationship and also from this restrictivity relationship how we can uh, derive a compatibility. So we have here on the left the well-known license that is CC BY. So we have here the permission of distribution, reproduction, commercial use, and also derivative works with the duty of notice and attribution. On the right, we have CC BY with INC, so uh, non-commercial use. So we have a prohibition commercial use. So this license actually have the same actions, but those actions are distributed differently in the license. So we have that, um, Commercial use is in the no, uh, in, on, the, on the right like a prohibition. So we can say that CC BY is less restrictive than CC BY in C. And uh, we can say that CC BY is compatible with CC BY in C because a work protected with CC BY can also be protected by CC BY in C. Okay, so something under CC BY in C can reuse things that are protected with that, with that. So we detect that the role of restrictiveness is very important, and uh, we consider that a license is more restrictive than another if it grants, at most, the same permissions and imposes at least the same obligations and prohibitions as the later. So, uh, we are interested in this restrictiveness relation because it has two advantages. It is easy to generate automatically this restrictiveness because it's a matter of check the status of the actions. And uh, a compatibility relation is in general derived from this restrictiveness relation. So um, we have here another example where we have uh, again CC by NC on the left now and CC by is a for share alike, so a copyleft uh, license. So we have that commercial use is uh, allowed here, but forbidden here. So we could say that CC by SA is less restrictive than CC by NC. But we have also this share alike uh, obligation. So finally, we think okay, maybe this one is, more restrict, is less restrictive than this one. So actually we have a cycle, so we don't know. We don't know, so we can say that not always we can detect a restrictiveness relation between two licenses, so uh, we can say which one is more restrictive, so we can't say if they are compatible. So by definition we'll say that they are not, they are not compatible. So the questions we face are, how to know easily if two licenses are compatible. So that will help to uh, know if I can reuse any license uh, resource for my resource. Uh, another question that we have to ask ourselves is, are we going to share the resource that we are building? If we are not sharing the resource, so we have no license to, 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 to apply. Uh, but we, if we are sharing the resource, yes, we have to uh, ask ourselves which one will be the license that uh, will be appropriated. There are several compatibility uh, of license that have been defined. In particular, this chart is very uh, popular. So this is a license compatibility chart that, was, uh, that is proposed by Creative Commons. And to read it is, if you have two uh, resources, 
If you want to know if you can combine them, you have to see their license. So here we have, for instance, buy and see. You have a resource with that. You can use another resource that is protected with where there is a, a check mark. Okay. The condition is that for the resource that you will produce, you should use the most restrictive license. Okay. So in this case, they are organized by restrictiveness. So this one is the more restrictive that you can use if you uh, combine whatever this one with the, uh, this one, for instance. You can use this license and this license too, where there are check marks. There is also this compatibility graph of uh, false, so for free open uh, code. Uh, what is very interesting here is that they propose a graph, a graph with the properties of transitivity, uh, anti-symmetry, and uh, uh, also reflexivity. So that's very, very interesting, and that motivates a lot of also our work. The problem with those compatibility uh, charts or uh, graph is that they are made handmade. Like, okay. So in our case, the idea was how to establish a compatibility between licenses automatically. So uh, for that, the goal is to take into account various and varied licenses on the fly, and an automator, automation must be able to determine the compatibility between licenses. So we propose an approach that is called Kali. It uses a partial order relation, so a partial order with the uh, uh, properties of reflexivity, transitivity, and um, uh, um, reflexivity, transitivity, and anti-symmetric, anti thank you. Yeah, because in the case of Creative Commons, the relationship of compatibility is symmetric, and it's not really the case in general. So, uh, based on this uh, restrictiveness between the license, and also uh, on constraints, because it's not uh, possible to do it without constraints. So based on the restrictiveness, based on constraints, we are able to build a compatibility between the license. So the principles of Kali is um, that we define uh, a lattice of a status. In this example, we have uh, a lattice that is actually a uh, a total order, we have that the status undefined is less restrictive than the status permit. Uh, permit is less uh, restrictive than duty and so on. So the idea is that we define that an action in the status undefined is less restrictive than an action in the status permit. And uh, the license to be compared should have exactly the, main, the same actions. If there are uh, a difference on actions, we just can't define the restrictiveness. And uh, of course, the actions can be distributed differently among the statutes. And all actions to uh, verify, to decide if a license is more restrictive than another. So all actions in one license should be less restrictive than all actions of the other. If this not, is not the case, so we can't decide that they, are, they have a restrictiveness relationship. And in addition to that, we define constraints to ensure the semantics of actions, because the actions can have very complicated semantics. So those are examples of restrictiveness lattice of status. So uh, we have here different domains. In the domain of file systems, for instance, we can have only two statuses: the status of permission and prohibition. Okay, in the uh, domain of Creative Commons, they define it only three statutes, so permission, obligation, and prohibition. In the older ORL uh, languages, uh, language, they define also the undefined status because they define 72 actions. So sometimes a license is not concerned by an action, so by default, all the actions will be in the undefined action. And that uh, will, be, it will make a lot of license to be comparable. And uh, here we have uh, a last example that uh, actually says, it here is a, it's not a total order, it's a partial order. So we have that uh, an action 
in a permission or an action in a recommendation is less restrictive than an action that is at the same time permitted and recommended. Okay. So, uh, concerning the constraints, we have two types of constraints. The first one is uh, a license um, uh, with constraints inside the license. For instance, a license where the commercial use is not required. Uh, another constraint is that uh, uh, share alike should not be prohibited. Those are constraints that we can apply to uh, uh, all or set of licenses. There, are, there is another kind of constraint that is the compatibility constraint between the license. So this is uh, a constraint that will be applied on the uh, roles. So here we can, uh, for instance, have that a license that prohibits derivative works is not compatible with any other license. Or another example is a license requiring share alike requires that the redistributed resource be protected by the same license. So in principle, this is not compatible with another license. So with that, we are able, we were able to build the compatibility of some popular license. So uh, you can access to this uh, compatibility graph in our uh, prototype. So here we define a set of data sets. Data sets are associated or protected with license and then we build the uh, compatibility graph of license. So the way of reading that is that um, license that are in the same node is because we, the, the machine readable version of those license actually were the same, okay? To do this uh, machine readable license, we did it by hand, okay? Um, so, and it was verified by a jurist. So here we can say that all these licenses are actually uh, compatible, uh, all compatible. So the idea is to say that uh, these licenses, this type, um, set of licenses are compatible with this, and this, this transitive. I have not talked about the compliance, but we can read in the other side the, uh, the graph saying that this license is compliant with all the licenses that are behind. Notice that this and this have no relationship, so they are not compatible, okay? When there is a node like that, where there is no common node, there is no compatibility. Okay, so what we can do with that is that, um, in this example, if I plan to protect my resource with CC by and C, so which resource can I reuse? Now with the compatibility graph of license, it's easy to answer. So I can reuse the resource protected by CC by NC because the reflexivity, and as well as those protected by less restrictive license. So in this case, uh, we are, uh, CC by NC is here, so with all this license, all we can reuse all these resources and all these resources. We can ask another question is that if my resource is protected by MIT, for instance, which other resource can reuse it? That's a very important question. If we want our resource to be reused, we have to protect them with the less restrictive license. In this case, MIT can be reused by all other resources that are more restrictive, okay? If my resource is here, it's almost not reusable. So in this case, MIT, uh, my resource can be reused by those who are protected by uh, a license which, which MIT is compatible. So all over the top of the graph. So, and we developed several use cases we implemented several use cases. These use cases is the, is the more recent that we have. So it's a search engine where the goal is to empower educators or teachers to help them to build uh, educational material. So uh, the idea is that they will, by keywords, so by, by domains, search for uh, relevant resources 
but also they will try to build a new resource that will preserve the uh, license of all the resources. So as all the search engines, we have a ranking for this, uh, the resource that we found in our graph that is acknowledged graph that is uh, available in, in Zenodo. And um, here we have a ranking by uh, relevance uh, regarding the topics that we are searching. In addition to that, as all the uh, um, search engines, we have the notice of the uh, uh, license. But more than that, actually teachers can bookmark the resource they are interested in use, and then they will wonder, they will know if they can actually make a mashup of the resource that I, they are interested in. So here I have some resource, so four resource, and uh, here I have the compatibility graph of license of the resource. And we have, so in uh, green, the license that can protect this mashup. So that's the uh, contribution of, of this uh, search engine. Sometimes we can have more than one license that can protect a, a mashup of resource. In this case, we have all those that are in green. But the idea if you want your resource to be uh, reused is to use the license that is the less restrictive license. So in this case, uh, you can uh, publish your resource under this, this license. And if there is no possibility to uh, produce a resource that has a license that is, uh, that, uh, is compliant with all the others, so our graph is in completely red. And you can know with this graph which is the um, resource that, is, that has a problem. So oh, here I don't have the, the notice, but here I, I, I can have a, a message that is saying why uh, it's not possible to have a license that will protect the whole mashup. So we can uh, see if we uh, go to this resource, which one is the resource that is uh, the problem, and then we can suppress it from here. So that's the idea. We have another uh, search engine that was developed uh, several years ago where uh, we have these data sets that we uh, just define in our locally. We can um, search for data sets by license. Here we define we describe actually the machine readable license in a, in a very uh, easy way of uh, understanding. And then we obtain the graph that you already know. We did the same for uh, license for software. So we have all those licenses uh, and the compatibility graph of those licenses. Uh, if you go to see the, uh, the prototype, you will see that we can also search by compliance. So we can search which that uh, software is compliant with a particular license. So remember that compliance is the other side, is the other way of uh, the relation of compatibility. So this is our uh, graph that is used for this. So to conclude, our compatibility model is not intended to, inter, uh, uh, to provide a legal advice. Okay, we need always a jurist to verify what we are doing, but at least it will uh, allow to exclude license that will contravene a particular uh, license, okay? Um, if our compatibility graph is verified by uh, a jurist, so we can go, okay? But every time that we, oh, okay, is the, the, uh, the management of the graph can be completely automated, but we have always to be careful about that. It's not a legal advice, we have to verify. And uh, even, if, if, that we have to know it, even if licenses are open, that does not mean that resource can be reused without restrictions. In all my examples, licenses are open, but you can see that there are compatibility or uh, incompatibility uh, reasons for this uh, license. And the license compatibility should be taken into account to encourage the publication and reuse of resources in a license compliant web. So I think it's very, very important. As open issues, there is this transformation of license notice into machine readable license. That is a, a problem, a natural language processing problem. 
there are a lot of works, that, but uh, okay, they are more or less performance, so again, somebody has to verify if the uh, translation of all the text in natural language is okay with the machine readable uh, version. So, and um, we have also to take into account other aspects of license related to usage context, uh, like jurisdiction or date of reuse or whatever, which is important in a license. So uh, there is another word that can be very interesting. You know that with Kali, we can by domain define compatibility graph. And uh, by domain, so they have, uh, we can have a lattice of a statues that is different from another domain. And by domain, we can have different actions. So one open uh, issue is also how to uh, compare two compatibility graph uh, of license. So if we can establish a, a correlation, an alignment between actions or uh, an homomorphism uh, between the graph, maybe we can uh, find this compatibility among orderings. So, thank you so much. Do you have any questions? Thank you.